After an hour, we pick up pocket queens in the small blind, a player in middle position raises to 20. The hijack calls, the cutoff calls with the smaller stack at this table. We don't want to play against three opponents from out of position. I 3 bet to 120 to win this right now, or narrow down the field. The initial preflop raiser folds, the hijack folds, the cutoff calls, leaving himself with about 450 behind. I put him on a hand like ace king, ace queen, or middling to high pocket pair like jacks, tens, or nines. We're heads up. The flop comes 9-6-3 with two diamonds. We've got an over pair on a pretty safe board for us, but we don't want to see any overs come out or any more diamonds. I bet 200. I'm fine getting it in if the opponent comes over the top or an additional 230. Before all my chips are even in the middle, the cutoff makes his move. Alright, so let's do it. Gumbo, gumbo. How can I not go all in the chickadees against Brad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can I not do this, Brad? No. Gotta do it, right? No good, right? Oh. Oh. Come on, Jack! Come on, Jack! Yeah. Alright, good hand, Brad. Good Thank you. Man. I love you, Brad. You the man. You the man. Nice to play with you, man. Hey, if I'm gonna lose, it's gonna be the Brad. Hey, <laughs> with Jack, the middle hand. Yeah, guys that I, I, I called for a ticket. He's earlier, so. Like, <laughs> hey. That's awesome. Nice hand, Brad. Thank you, man. Queens are hot. What was your, what's your name again? I'm Gus. Gus? Or August. Oh. Uh, yeah. August. Yeah. yeah, nice to nice playing with you. Hey. Hey. I, I even tell my buddy, I was like, if I'm gonna lose today, it's too big as a bread. I'm a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Gust loses in a pretty big cooler and has maybe the best attitude I've ever seen from someone who just got stacked. Win or lose, it's a good time at these events, people are here to have fun, and that's what I enjoy most about playing with the viewers. Minutes later, it's our turn with the Jiggities, we're on the button, a player in middle position raises to 15. The cutoff calls, we're going to take a similar approach as we did in the previous hand with a 3 bet to 60. The initial raise is smaller, there's one less opponent, and we're in position which is why our 3 bet sizing here is only half the amount that we 3 bet with queens. Middle position player calls for 45 more, the cutoff folds, it's down to heads up, the flop is much better for jiggities, it comes jack jack 6 rainbow, we flop quads in a 3 bet pot. What happens next is almost as unbelievable as the flop. The action's on the opponent first, he hates the community card so much that he foregoes his option to check, and instead, I kid you not, open folds. How do you do that? No. Just open muck? Oh my god, that hurts. In all my time playing poker, I've never seen that before. We don't get paid. It's at least always fun to get every jiggity in the deck together for a reunion. At the next table, we pick up pocket threes in the hijack. The player in middle position raises to 20. I call, the cutoff calls, the button calls, we're going four ways to the flop, it comes 7-6-3 with two spades, we've got bottom set on a very coordinated board against multiple opponents. It's about to go down. The middle position player checks, we can't let this check back, I bet 65. The cutoff folds immediately, the button could have a strong draw, a straight, a better set, two pair or an over pair, he raises to 250. The middle position player folds, I've got bottom set, and that's a phenomenal hand, but the fourth nuts doesn't feel super strong in a multi-way pot when the button could have easily called preflop with pocket sevens, sixes, or five four suited. If I re-raise, I'll mostly just get called my hands that are beating me, or I'll have lots of outs like ace five of spades. Still, I'm not getting away from this, and I need to deny equity in instances when I'm ahead. I re-raise to 600. If I get set over set, that's just a cooler. The opponent's in the tank for a long time. I'm not sure if he's Hollywooding or not. Then, if we listen closely, we hear him say, the button has 1400 total. After he says that, I don't think that he's acting. I think he has a genuine decision to make about what to do. Eventually, he seals his fate in jams. I didn't re-raise the 600 with intentions of folding. I don't know if they allow you to. It's up to you. The opponent has five deuce of spades for a big combo draw versus my set. It's one of the best case scenarios and we're still only a two to one favorite. We get permission to run it twice. The last time I ran it twice, it was for a pot over $60,000 and I lost both runouts. This one's for less than $3,000, but right now, I want to win it just as bad. It'll be tough to scoop though. The first turn is the six of clubs locking up half the pot for us since we improved to a full house. I'm immediately regretting running it twice. The river is an inconsequential eight of clubs. I was hoping it was a spade or four so that the opponent would burn some of his outs before going into the second run out. The dealer puts out the king of hearts on the second turn. It's a nice safe card. We're one blank away from winning the entire pot outright. The last river 
It's the Jack of Clubs. We win it all and are off to an amazing start. It's about an hour and a half into the session and we're up $2,000. That's 400 big blinds. Apparently, while I was in Austin, I was saving up all my run good for this LA meetup game. I can't help but think that if I was up 400 big blinds in the previous session, I would have had an $80,000 profit. 2,000 is still pretty good for an hour and a half of playing. I'll take it. We're gonna try and expand on it though. We're dealt pocket aces in the big blind and there are a lot of opponents who wanna get involved. Under the gun plus one raises to 15. I play in middle position calls, the cutoff calls, the small blind calls, the actions on us. With so many players putting money in, I three bet to 100. It's almost seven times the initial raise size. Under the gun plus one folds. The middle position player wants to stick around, but I doubt he has anything very strong. I want to put out a disclaimer that this is for the blog. He calls. The cutoff and small blind fold. It's down to heads up. We're out of position. The flop comes 964 with two hearts. We don't have the ace of hearts. This isn't a board that's good for my three bet range, and it seems pretty decent for a guy who called me light in order to make the video. Aces are still quite strong though. I bet 130. The opponent is a little chirpy over there. Would you like me to raise now or on the turn? To be honest, I'm not sure which one I prefer. I guess the player interprets my silence to mean that I'd like him to raise the turn because he just calls the flop bet. He may have a heart draw. The turn is the three of hearts. I really hope he doesn't have a flush. I check. Haha. -ha. No way for him to raise me now. The opponent checks back. That's all the info that I need to feel like I've got the best hand. The river is the king of clubs. It's a card that probably didn't change who has the lead. I bet 225 for value. The middle position player might have something that he'd like to get the showdown with, perhaps a hand like second pair. Unfortunately, he lacks some key characteristics that separate him from people like Peter Parker and Bruce Wayne. Ah, I'm not a hero. You gave 6 12, go. You gave good good. Nice hand, Brad. Oh. This isn't too big of a pot, still happy to not get cracked. Here we get into a PLO double board mom pot. It's seven handed for $20 each, we're in the cutoff. The first flop is 1076 rainbow, we've got top pair and a double gutter. The second flop is queen jack nine with two diamonds, we've got a straight and a flush draw to go along with it. The big blind makes a pot size bet of 140. I'm not going away for that amount, I call, it's down to heads up, the turns are the king of clubs and the three of clubs. I really hope that I'm not up against something like king 10 nine or 10 nine eight. The big blind doesn't go with a pot size bet this time, he bets 300. Hmm, not sure what to make of this sizing. My read is that he's trying to get to the rivers a little cheaper. I don't enjoy calling in double board bomb pots. I prefer to be the one pushing the action. I've got the second nuts on one board with a diamond redraw. I've got good card removal on the top board with the draw there. Plus, there aren't too many tens left in the deck that my opponent could have, which is a pretty key card. I turn my hand into somewhat of a bluff and jam for 1250 effective. It's just under the size of the pot. If I get called and lose both boards, the profit for the session will be almost completely gone. We at least don't get snapped. Why not be good for me? 15 10? You go, are you calling? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. I do not have 15 10. Okay, that is good for me then. Oh, okay. okay. Got a straight. I played this very aggressively and get lucky that my straight is at least the current winner on the bottom board. I'm up against Queen Jack 9 8 with three clubs, so I'm drawing dead on the top. And if the board pairs on the bottom, I'll get scooped. Not a good situation that I put myself in. The first river is the deuce of clubs. The opponent improves to a flush there, though it doesn't matter much. The second river is the seven of hearts. We end up chopping. It was sort of a bizarre situation. If I had just called the turn and I faced a river shove, I would have had to have folded and I would have lost nearly 500 in the hand. The way I played it allowed me to have the best result, but I got somewhat lucky to not lose the entire pot. Don't necessarily do the things that I do. Hold on, as we're racking up, we get dealt pocket aces in the hijack, we're definitely playing this, I raise to 20. I'm sure that each of the opponents suspects that I've got some type of strong hand, the cutoff calls, I'm already leveling myself, thinking that the cutoff may try and pull a move on me, knowing that I was about to wrap up the day. We're heads up out of position, the flop comes king 8-4 with two diamonds, not great since I don't have the ace of diamonds. I bet 20 again. The cutoff calls, the turn is the nine of hearts, I check for pot control. Cutoff checks back, so I should have the best hand as long as nothing changes on the river. The dealer puts out the queen of spades. Not bad unless I was up against jack 10 or king queen. The cutoff probably bets turn a lot of the time with those hold-ins though. I bet 45 for value. The player seems like he's thinking about putting in a raise. That won't make much sense. 
I underwrapped my hand on the turn and then bet small on the river, so if he chooses a reasonable sizing, I've already made up my mind, I'll definitely be calling. The opponent makes it 130. Fine. Oh. You're good. Oh, really? Oh no, oh, to the aces. Do it. Right. They say to never play out of the rack, but it works well for us here. One last pot gets pushed our way before we book a $1,670 win and end the session for real. What is it? Do it. I just want to call your name and have you look towards me and then look away and start. <laughs> All right, let's see if I get aces again real quick though. Not this time. <laughs> 